Do you see this move from yeah. 348? Like, I can't even, what, how long in between is this? Is this less than 30 minutes? That's like, gotta be, dude. That's like an hour and a half or two hour move. Yeah, so in two hour moves, like it's only $300, but this probably turns out to be like a 10% move within the span of like an hour. So when I saw this, like I'm not using like the best service. This is like coin market cap. So I literally thought this was like a glitch. I was like, there's no way like the entire positions I had corrected like 10% in an hour. But that is exactly when, fortunately for me, I'm still up all the money I put in it, 7%. But at one point, yeah, my peak was around like 3,500. Uh, so yeah, crypto is definitely super volatile right now. Um, we could check the rankings in terms of all the cryptos versus and, and i thought like options were volatile that's like another that's another level of volatility nah, it, it's like is my is my website glitching type of like <laughs> literally that's what in my when i saw that chart i was like nah that's not real like did i did someone like hack my account and like accidentally like close my positions I, that's what it looked like oh it's crazy oh my god but yeah these are the most vol downward trending top 100 tokens we can look particular in, particularly in my watch list um how my watch list is performed mm -hmm. um within the coins i'm looking at yeah, these are the best performing assets in the last week i'm pretty sure i have a couple of these and the worst performing one there are these and out of these ones that i actually hold i hold dydx i'm pretty sure it probably gone compound so yeah you can now when you're looking at how my crypto my watch list performed like in the last seven days it kind of makes sense how you can see how my portfolio also at the same time coincided with like a 10 percent drop in value because that's primarily what a lot of these major tokens have done too in the past week mm -hmm. so, Damn. hopefully that's just like people just like checking how much they spent at the club for new year's eve and they're like shit how am i gonna pay for this <laughs> and just having to force some liquidations because that kind of would make sense at the beginning of the year or less than four days into the year it doesn't even feel like four days into the year it kind of feels like day two for me but um i could see how yeah. people are still in their shoes because i'm in the, still in the shoes where i gotta figure out how i pay for my table you know uh, but that's that i don't know if there's anything particularly you're interested in my portfolio we could just laugh at well, I don't. I don't think I have too much of a laughable portfolio. What What Louise say? Green is green. Yeah, I'm green, finally, green. I'm finally in the green, baby. I'm finally green. green. In the green. And then also like the standards in crypto, it's like, oh, if it's not like 10x, 100x, then it doesn't count. I'm like, dude, if it's green, it's green, man. Because that. Now, to be honest, that's how kind of what I judge myself, right? Because I yeah. see myself like at seven percent right here, and that's that's like probably some people's like year end per, like return, right? And I, I was gonna say that, like that's S and P five hundred in like an average year. I think like average year is like nine percent for the S and P. So like, exactly, and I I've been feeling disappointed with that, like oh, like seven percent, like. And I like guess it's, it's like, let me show you the performance. It's like, it, it's easy to get to thinking like this because so since I deposited my money in my portfolio, right? Mm -hmm. Bitcoin has almost returned a hundred percent, 96%. While mine is um around 17. Oh, this is like up to like two days ago. Cause I guess it takes some days for it to like re like calculate. So the last time with January 2nd mm -hmm. was my peak profit was, um, with 15% return mm -hmm. and Bitcoin was 96. And then like, if you the, always, the metric is like um, how you compete relative to the S and P 500. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in the crypto market, it's probably a better adjustment to say how you did like, like to the overall Bitcoin market or something. Yeah. Right. So when you see that like, 96% versus my 50%, it's like, dude, what the fuck were you trading? Like you might as well just put all that money in Bitcoin, literally. But like the only thing I be trying to bake myself is like the reason why I expected like these 10 X returns and stuff out of my portfolio was because I had like a longer time horizon. Like, for example, let's let's uh, click on like the, let's make it easy for myself. Sushi shop. Uh, sushi shop has definitely seen all like these are market rises because it was one of the first like crypto Ethereum projects. Right. And it kind of has like so its peak value was 20 bucks. Now it's like a dollar and twenty, and I probably roughly purchased it around like I feel like maybe summertime of 2022. Mm -hmm. So it's only been six months of like the entire two year time window. Like I'm like judging myself based on. So I feel like I have another year to like catch up and compete with the Bitcoin return. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's 
I have a better chance of that happening in the back half of this year or like of my time expectations rather than the front half. Yeah. Because it's easier for Bitcoin to go from 20K to 40K rather, again, from 40K to 80K. Like That's for probably sure, not yeah. going to happen as frequently. But since my tokens barely did their movement in 2023, mm-hmm. Now, since I can competing against realistically, probably from that 40k move, yeah, to like, let's say a 70k move, I, I feel like I have a greater chance of the percentage stuff happening. So, yeah, I lost in 2023 against Bitcoin, but I feel like I'm still not counted out, you know. Yeah, dude. And as Brandon says, we got some positivity, positivity power hour, but stop judging so hard, bro. It's your portfolio and your dollars, and it's a learning process. Uh, so. man, Brandon always got those cheering up for his red, yeah, on. yeah, chill out, dude. You, but- you- yeah, I think like I think maybe and I don't have a chart to pull up at the very moment right now, but like you uh, like kind of similar to Microsoft, like Microsoft was not flat, but like it took maybe like eight years to recover from the dot com bubble popping. And so, then what it did, Jesus Christ. It did. No, exactly. Yeah. And like you could argue. Yeah, you pull it up right there. It might have even been longer. I'm just kind of going yeah. off memory right now, but it was like basically flat and or it didn't break even yeah for another like yeah maybe like eight to ten years or something like that mm. and look at where it is now you you making me feel like yeah maybe fundamentals ain't too bad like ooh, it's yeah. not terrible and but that being said like they i mean they found a way to build a competitive business model after i mean a lot of tech companies a lot of companies that were sort of like based around the internet really got uh, significantly devalued during the dot-com bubble right because they didn't find a unique a good way to sort of monetize the internet and monetize technology mm-hmm. until later and once they did figure it out, like we're seeing like mo- so much of like even the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ is based in these big tech names that, um, again, like we're, what we're seeing with Microsoft did kind of nothing for like 10, 12 years. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's um, that doesn't necessarily mean like their fundamentals are measurable or retail signals or something like that. But that is like I would argue like a true part of their business model. Right. Like mm-hmm. they did actually have a business model that worked. It doesn't necessarily mean you can build measurable signals from fundamentals. That's kind of like more of an ambiguous question. But I think Microsoft is an example of like, okay, look, so this is something that did nothing for so long. And then it, I mean, popped off as like, not even, it looks like a cryptocurrency in the long term. So. Yeah. I feel like you like explaining all this reasoning makes me feel like, yeah, I kind of like that middle of where it's in an industry that's ex- like showcasing volatility, but it still has like, like a business model like you can like understand its growth potentials and why like that volatility is showcased due to those like fundamental reasons and like the internet i feel like was just the first like wave of that like all that software internet stuff and now like crypto like the closest we can get to like something new that has like that same taking off capabilities that hasn't already been reached by like these former like software internet companies and then the other thing as well is that like it's so i mean we're talking here let me share some slides real quick this is what i'm talking about right like nvidia which has surpassed all-time highs 15 times in the last year right and absolutely just especially after 2020 like almost vertical growth it did it did basically in the sense of scale nothing from 2008 until like maybe like 2016 something like that. And even then, like it didn't nearly get to the level that we're seeing now and that we've seen over the last year. And similarly between like 2002 and 2008, it was also like relatively flat. I have a question for you, Julia. Yeah. Real quick before you proceed with the stats calculation, just from looking at this chart as like, is the only way you would have like ridden this entire high, like is if you were like Jensen Wang, where you were like a major stockholder and like you're just basically your net worth is tied into this company or like, Cause like it just seems so easy to, like want to hold something like this, but like I feel like nobody really has the guts to do that unless like you're really an executive yeah. in these companies. Is that for, is that how you like feel about these like big? Oh my god, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like think about the world back in 2002, which mm-hmm. I don't even know. Were you born in? <laughs> I was one years old, probably in Nigeria with no AC on. You know. What okay, I'm so. Maybe think about the world back in 2008. If you even remember, I barely remember that. Man, I remember looking over at my uh, classmate and he was playing like uh, Power Rangers. And I was like, yo, you playing Power Rangers, bro? You badass, bro. Me and you going to be friends. You should have said, like, hey, invest in NVIDIA. And, you know what? Fuck <laughs> it. Yeah, you right. <laughs> oh, shit. No, I feel like I would have gained more than a friend right there. I probably would have earned like a political adversary if I told him to invest in a 
the video in 2008. Jeez. Oh my God. But I mean, like, yeah, think about the world back in 2008 or 2000 or even back in like 2015. It's like a mm -hmm. way different world. And like the industries that succeeded, like I know AI, at least in like the academic space, like machine learning and AI was one, it was like a technology that was like not really seen as potentially having like applications, like consumer applications. Or even possible. Did. People, yeah. people, some people even think it will ever reach like toward the levels it just is that today type stuff. Yeah, the the likelihood of someone seeing Nvidia's business model in 2000 and like no, in 30 years or in 20 years, whatever, this is going to be this is going to be the next big thing. There were so many promising companies at that time that might have had more like cultural relevance that might have been seen as more likely to succeed. Finding these gems and predicting them so far in advance, back when Nvidia's price is at like whatever ten dollars, like that's just. It's kind of like unrealistic to expect to do that consistently. And to be honest, it makes me want to give more like kudos to the CEO because the stock can only reflect the value. Like, let's say you you be like, oh yeah, I think Nvidia is gonna do this because I like their business model. Mm -hmm. It still has to like depend on like the CEOs or the executives knowing that's like the future and that's like what they're trying to solve too, and that's where all that growth will come from because yeah. like. Right now, like I feel like, damn, am I like exposed enough to more like enough information that I can see like what industry right now that nobody's like looking at and not considering it as to be like a big thing in the future that eventually is going to just be a major driver, driving force in society. Yeah. The same way like this man saw like Jensen, who I'm referring to, by the way, saw like that AI and all these technologies back in like the company when he founded in the nineties were going to be like a big thing. Like to have that level of vision is crazy. And like, I can only hope like I'm underestimating some big things myself, but like, just because they're so far, I can't imagine them the same way probably he felt about all these big innovations his company was going to challenge one day. Like, well, I think like the other thing too, is that it's, it is a lot, like, obviously there's a lot of skill involved. There's a lot of like industry awareness, but there's also a lot of luck. Yeah, for sure. Developing. I didn't want to like acknowledge yeah. that midway after giving his kudos. Cause I yeah. remember like him even saying like, they were more a gaming company at first and out of nowhere, all these like AI companies came to him. So it might not even have been a thing where like he was always planning to serve these AI companies, but like yeah. they just came. Like I was even, I remember I was talking this last tangent, last tangent mm -hmm. of ADHD power hour, and then we can get back into markets, but yeah. I was talking to um, a professor at my university and he was like a physics Nobel laureate, right? He mm -hmm. won a Nobel prize for his research, I think in like the late nineties or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I'm like, oh, how did you know that this research was going to get the Nobel prize? He's like, I didn't, <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just studying the right thing at the right time and the industry got behind it. And mm -hmm. it was a lot of, a lot of it was timing. Like he yeah. could have been studying this a couple of years earlier, or a couple of years late, and that would have changed everything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a lot around like what society is going to wind up valuing, what the field or industry is going to wind up valuing or whoever, like that's, there's a lot of luck involved in that. In addition to obviously skill and industry awareness and all that kind of stuff. For sure. I just hope not now here, Brad, from you, I just hope I'm spending my time reading the right sources rather than um looking at BS TikToks all day, you know? 